One of the big rumors from last week was Microsoft canceling plans for a Surface Duo 3 that was similar in design to the Surface Duo 1 and 2 in favor of a device that's going to be similar in design to a Galaxy Fold 4. So instead of the two displays, the one big internal foldable display. And I, I gotta say, I don't love it. I don't love the plans for that if it is indeed true that they are working on a more traditional folding device. There's a few different reasons for that. Number one is durability. We've just gotten to the point with other manufacturers where I feel comfortable with a foldable device that goes like this. Right? You can kind of do flat and up again and close and then flat again. And the rumor is that Microsoft's going to keep the functionality of the Duo devices even with a folding glass display. So that means you get tent mode, beyond 180 degrees, all the rest of it. So I, <laughs> you're going to be trusting them to, their first time out with a foldable display to kind of do this. Have your tent mode. And then back again, over and over and over again, thousands of times, and hoping that the durability of that device holds up. I'm willing to give Microsoft the benefit of the doubt on the hardware side. Typically, they've done a really nice job with Surface hardware across the board. Software has been more of a mixed bag. It generally gets to where it needs to be. It doesn't always start that way. I know, I know people who paid $1,500 for the original Surface Duo and lived with it with Android 10 for a year are throwing things at the screen right now. I hear you. I understand. But those of us that started our Surface Duo journey a little bit later on that had a largely good experience with Android 11 and now with Android 12L after a rocky start on 12L mostly have had a decent experience. So hardware, maybe they could pull that off. You're putting yourself in a category with some established players there technology-wise, but we'll give them the benefit of the doubt there. The, other, the second thing that really concerns me is the price. Microsoft had a wonderful opportunity here. They built in a fan base. There were people who were loyal to this thing for a couple of years now, or a few years actually, on this device. That It would have been great to offer two pricing tiers for a Surface Duo. I would have loved to have seen a refreshed version of the first Surface Duo, which I think is the best Duo of the two. Love this design. Love that it closes flat. You didn't have to put all the bells and whistles in here. You didn't have to put 90 hertz in here or all that rest of that stuff or an upgraded camera. None of that. They could have offered me a refreshed version of the Surface Duo right around 1000 bucks. I would have been game for that. Then, if you want to have the one... With the higher spec one, with the higher refresh rate displays, the flagship level camera stuff that you put in there that doesn't close quite flat. You want to put other stuff in there. You want to have the souped up one that you still charge $1,400 for? Sure. No one's going to eat your lunch for that. Go ahead. Go wild. But give me the cheaper option. Now I don't think that's possible. If they give you something that's like a Galaxy Fold 4, expect them to keep Fold 4-esque pricing. Especially if they were offering this one, or even the two, at $1,400, $1,500. They're not going to all of a sudden go with a full foldable device and then say, yeah, you know what, $1,200. I can't see that happening. They're going to give you all the tech. They're going to charge you for all the tech. This device is going to stay at $1,500, $1,600. So if they still have time to reverse course, uh, you want to do the bigger foldable? You want to do the full one? Fine. Knock yourself out. Have a $1,500, $1,600 one. Give us a refreshed version of the original Surface Duo, and I think you'll keep a lot of people happy and people who are curious about the form factor. There's a lot of curiosity. There's a lot of views on these video videos on YouTube. I think people would try it if you kept it around a thousand bucks. You get up fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars. Nobody's gonna take a chance on that. That's a big chunk of money. No one's gonna say, hey, you know what? Ah, you know, it's worth a shot. That's not a worth a shot price. That's a full on investment price when you're talking that. So that to me is a disappointment. If they're going, they're scrapping a Surface Duo 3 design that was similar to the originals and going with something like a Galaxy Fold 4, it disappoints me that we're losing the opportunity to get a, a Duo at a decent price and then of course have to play the ultra flagship price that something like that would come in. The big thing for me though is how I use the device and we're going to talk about that right now. And the big change for me is the way that I use the device and certainly the way I think about using the device. Right now, going back to that point about durability at the top of the video, I don't think about how I use this device. 
I know it's two screens. I know it's got a durable hinge. I'm not ex- I'm not babying it. I'm just saying, oh, I got to be careful. I'm opening up, or I'm flipping it over. I got to be super careful. Yeah, am I careful? Of course, I'm careful with all my devices, but it's not something that I baby like I baby my Fold Four. I go ahead, I slam it shut, I throw it down, I take it with me. It's in a jacket pocket, it's in a book bag, it's in whatever I'm taking that day, messenger bag. I don't think about this device. I just love the design. I throw it around, I use it, it's durable, and that's it. I think you lose some of that when you go to a more traditional fold. You don't throw this around anymore. You don't uh, kind of, you're a little bit more careful when you're opening it up and you're using it, all the rest of it. You're careful the pressure that you put on the display i sh- i know they have pens for these type of displays now there's an s pen on the galaxy fold 4 but it just changes the relationship that you, you have with the device the other thing is multitasking i love the multitasking and the fact that i can have two separate experiences on the surface duo i think if you make this one big display i don't care how big you make it i don't care if you leave it the same aspect rate, the same internal screen real estate, whatever you do with that, you lose something. If I can't have it where I have one screen up over here and then I could go ahead, swap it over, have my other screen up over here where I get two separate swipes, which I like to have the two different apps, I'm not going to multitask nearly as much. I'm going to treat it like one big display, like I wind up doing nine times out of 10 on the fold instead of two distinct displays that could give me usability with different apps. Nine times out of 10 here, I've got Outlook open on this side. I've got Twitter or Instagram open on this side and I'm going to work. I'm just scrolling through the rest. I'm not going to do that on a fold. It's too intrusive to set that up. Every time you close it, you open it, then you got to shift apps over and stuff like that. I could just have that experience here, especially you set up the app pairs and you're good to go. I understand that Android 12L has made multitasking significantly easier on things like the Fold 4. But what it's done is not necessarily make multi-screen or multi-instance multitasking better. It's made switching through apps better. So with the taskbar, I find myself on the Fold 4 Swip it through Instagram. Okay, now I'm on Twitter. Now I'm whatever. I'm still using the display, the full display, but I'm able to switch between apps faster. So I find myself using more apps and using apps in tandem and stuff like that. With the Duo, I legitimately can have the experience where it's two apps. There's multiple apps. There's apps of different kinds open at the same time. I love having one node open on one side. You can see the widget here for it. One node open on one side. Outlook open on the other. If there are things I have to include in a video, I can have the notes on what I have to include, pull them from an email. It's just a level of multitasking that I think goes away. Maybe that's just me. Maybe you do a great job of multitasking currently on your foldable. You go ahead and you push things up and you put the apps and you size them properly and you get your app pairings and you're set to go. That's not me. That's not me. And I think that you're going to take away a lot of that. The one thing that I did like from the design changes or the rumored design changes for something that would be a foldable is an external display. I do think that the Duo needs an external display of some kind, even if it's a windowed one, something like a Flip 4, just kind of a small outer display, so you can at least have some usability. See who's calling, for instance. I, I People have all these kind of workarounds around. Well, you got to get a smartwatch with it. you got to get a Bluetooth headset. <laughs> Look, if you want this to have mass appeal and to have some consumer appeal with it, have it so you can have it as a daily driver without having to jump through hoops and do different things. So an external display just to see what's going on. Hey, where's that buzz? A text message, a junk call, uh, one of those political, call, whatever it is, I could ignore it. Or was it somebody that I have to answer the phone for? So if they could have some way of doing that with a design change that doesn't involve a smartwatch or a Bluetooth headset, that I do think would be a welcome change. But as for the rest... I would love just a refreshed version of the original Duo. Really love using it. Love using it to this day. I think that would be great. If you gave me this at a thousand bucks, I'm signing up. That's for sure. Let me know what you think below. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve Lush's day.